Rolling and the sound is speeding. Why is that zooming in on my thing? Hi, check one, two. Why, welcome to another episode of this week of Drew for Thursday, March 11th. March 11, 2021. Let's on. On today's episode, we got, I'm going to talk about Oprah and, uh, you know, in the beginning of the show, I got a wicked rhyme with my freestyle flow. I got hippity hop coming out my big toe. And out my right toe is a nug. And it's of weed, and that's what you need, is a nug of weed coming from your toe indeed. (laughs) Hi, what is that? Hi, welcome to another episode of This Week with Drew. This Week with Drew for Thursday, March 11th, uh, 2021. How are you feeling? Did you have a good week? Are you having a nice week so far? I hope you... Did you get your oil changed? Probably not because you haven't been driving. Did you... Maybe you have been. Make sure you get your oil changed. Did you get your... You know, have you been outside? It's been nice. Hopefully you went outside. And uh, yeah, okay. So here we go. Let's start the show with a little bit of... uh, Motherfucking... uh, Oh, shit. How was my week? How was my week? Okay, so my week's been pretty good. I've had reading week off school. Uh, I've just been chipping away. Fuck, I got cables flying all over the place here. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> I got I've been chipping away. I've had reading week, but my uh, production teacher, my radio lab guy, the Dodger Wrench guy, this guy is, he saw, he watched the movie Dodgeball, and then he saw, and then he saw them. I don't know, I got these little skater floofs. I'm going to let, let him fly though, actually. He watched the movie, so my radio production professor, he watched the movie uh, Dodgeball and he saw the guy throwing wrenches and he's like, that is a great way to teach. (laughs) So this motherfucker has been tossing wrenches and the latest one has been to assign a 90 second feature, which is like a 90 second radio thing, um, uh, like a a short 90 second, essentially mini documentary, um, Based on a powerful woman of our choosing of between four women, Oprah, Simone Biles, uh, Sally Ride, and someone else. I can't remember the third one. And uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, so his latest wrench was to assign that on Wednesday before reading week and then to make it do the Wednesday after reading week. So you have two, you have essentially uh, five class days to do it. Um, which is like, it's a, I don't know, man. And I, I consider myself pretty decent at production. And uh, so far I've invested two, four, six, seven, eight, eight hours about, I'd say of my time into this thing. So, I mean, it's not, ho- it's not heavy. It's like a day's work. You know, I still got a couple more hours probably to do. Um, but you know, it's like, and that's for me, like having production experience, you know? So I don't know how some of these kids that are coming at 18, you know, fucking, you never using this sort of stuff before and now they got to do this man i don't know so <laughs> but so i just been chipping away at that i get up i take terry in the morning and then i just sit in front of this computer and i look at the recording software all day i look at recording software which is like i used to think about that like whoa i wonder what like actually working in a studio would be like because i've never actually like worked worked in a studio i've like all ever only like um f- sold products to studios <laughs> i'm like a fucking it's like a medical salesman you know what i mean like i'm not a doctor but i know how these drugs work <laughs> so uh <laughs> so yeah so i've never actually like fucking worked in a studio despite all the like studio like work and like training and stuff that i've had um so now that I'm actually experiencing just like what it's like to sit in front of a, co- it's just sitting in front of a computer all day. It's still just a fucking computer job, which is like, it's all right. At least it's a fun computer job where you get to listen to music and like beat match and fucking bam, 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 ba, 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 bam, 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 like listen to the same fucking songs over and over again. And it's all right. Cause it's like a creative thing. You get to like be creative and stuff. So it's definitely like, but it is still essentially just sitting in front of a computer all day, which I don't know about that. I don't know how I like that. So this is good about school because in the beginning I was thinking like, yeah, production would be a sick route for me to take, especially because I like it and stuff and I already know it and stuff. But uh, now it's like, fuck, do I really want to sit in front of a computer all day? Like, do I really want to? I don't know what I want to do. I feel like I want to write. I want to be a writer. Like, obviously, <laughs> I want to write scripts, though. And and uh, I think I want to write commercials. That's the thing that I'm having the most fun doing is writing commercials because it's the most like sketch writing. And because it's like you literally have to write a little sketch and then just put a little tagline at the end. Find the fucking 
find the juice of what it is. You know, I recently saw a great advertisement that is so simple, but it was just like uh, people like leaving their house with no pants on. And it was just like, or like uh, get serving spaghetti that wasn't cooked with sauce on it. But the sauce was cooked, but the spaghetti wasn't. And then it was just like, you wouldn't do... You wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do this halfway. So why do you do your mask halfway? And it shows a guy with his mask under his nose, and it's just like boom. And all you got to think about is like, okay, so what are we trying to say here? Well, like you're half asking your mask. Like don't do that. So what? Are, and then you just give examples of other things that are half asses. And then you just get to sit there and brainstorm. Like what if a guy served a pasta that wasn't cooked? What if a guy fucking left his house with no pants on? And then you get to start f- firing off jokes. Which is sick. And I immediately, as I saw that, I was just like, I know exactly what this commercial is for. Just because of this class in advertising, I was like, oh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. (laughs) So, yeah, so I've had this week off of school and just hanging out with Terry and fucking it's been good. I hope you also had a good week. Now I got to think about um, uh, what I'm going to do in the summertime because hopefully if comedy comes back up, I don't know what, how much income, obviously I'm going to do as much stand up as I can, but I don't think my income will be back to where it was pre pandemic for a couple of years, at least in terms of like live shows, you know, the zoom shows. I don't know. I don't, I, it's not the same juice, man. A lot of guys are doing them and they're making money and it's just like, all right, man. Like for me, it's like, you're, that's, you're not even doing comedy anymore, bro. Like you're out. You're that's, you might as well have a day job now because that is not comedy. And, um, I, I've done a couple and it's like, it feel like, I don't know. I mean, it is, I guess, cause you're telling jokes in front of people, but it's not the fucking juice, man. The juice is this night out it's the fucking going to the place and cutting standing there and waiting in line and getting your ticket and going and sitting down and ordering the drinks and the fucking atmosphere and the people and you're like oh i hope the guy's funny blah 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 me oh i seen him on youtube blah 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 and then the whole fucking juice of it, man. And then the lights go down and then the fucking bump and then the fucking thing pops off and it's like, woo. And then the wave rides and it's a completely unpredictable experience. And you're there with them in the thing and they're feeding off you. And it's not, and you know, and, and you can get that sort of like, you can feel it, man. Like my shit is like kiss, bro. Like, you know, <laughs> like they're way better live. It doesn't translate, man, because of the way that, you know, I don't know, at least for me, that's what I get off of it. That was why I did it. That's why it's like any life. That's why I've um, consumed my life with live performance, you know, because that's what the juice is, is the live performance aspect. And that's why I think I had a hard time transitioning into commercial acting and film acting was because of the acting that I am uh, I do is theater acting it's stage acting it's it's and it's a completely different type of acting and um I don't know I guess it just doesn't translate I know it's a skill I could learn for sure but I just feel like it uh, it's um I don't know, man, that's still like, and then doing a hundred takes of the same line just to get a fucking one little thing out, you know, just to make sure you get the right thing. It's like, there's just something about the gamble of the live, the live thing where it's like this whole fucking thing could come crashing down at any moment. And, uh, and you're there and you know that too. So there's almost this sort of like, we're on it together, man. Like we're on this trip together and like the live, I don't know, music, anything, man, all that shit is just, it's, it's. So I don't know, kudos to the fucking Zoom, you know, fucking the Zoomers, the baby Zoomer comedians out there. Um, But I don't know, man. I just fucking, I can't do it, dude. So I got to get a job. That's the point of what I was trying to say is like, now do I got to get a job? And this would be my first time in my adult life because I pretty much like at 19, I started going to school and then I dropped out to do stand up and I was in a band and then I kind of just been fucking doing that ever since like we're selling guitars whenever and I whenever I needed to and so I've been pretty much like you know self-employed for this whole time you know my entire decade of 20s so now I'm like 31 it's just like I gotta think about getting a job it's like what the fuck do I want to do man do I want to go like work on a line that's fun but it sucks but it's fun and it goes by quick. Your shifts go by like mad quick, man. Once dinner rush starts, it's just like, okay, when the tickets are up, it's like, okay, let's go. And then you fucking rip it. 
Even though I only worked at a fucking Earl's for like six months in high school. It was still Earl's Tim Palace, man. That was a good ride. Gretzky ate there, man. Fucking Gretzky ate there. When Los and Mink were working and Los made him a fucking 99, a cake with a 99 on it. And he sent it out and I think Gretzky didn't eat it. <laughs> I'll have to get Los on the phone right now. Let me text him right now. Yo, can you, are you available for a call? I'm just actually going to call him. If he answers, he'll fucking answer. Okay, we're calling Los right now on the podcast to see if fucking he could tell the Wayne Gretzky cake story. Okay, here we go. Low Senator, who's also been killing it at the poker game that we have, the Friday night fucking poker game. Loso, I don't think he's going to answer. I think he's working right now. Because what is it? 252 here. So what is that? 1252 in Alberta? Yeah, he ain't going to answer. Okay, that's all right. I'll get the story from him fucking next time. But Gretzky, he was working and fucking Gretzky showed up with uh, with like Kevin Lowe or one of those guys. And then I think he, Matt Los sent out yeah okay fuck um he sent out some shit he sent out a cake that they didn't order that had a 99 on it and i think they're like what the fuck man like just leave us alone <laughs> and they went over to get a picture with him and stuff <laughs> i can't remember the exact story <coughs> okay how's my week what's going on what do we got now i don't have a i gotta get a job i've been cooking sourdough i uh, fucking I don't know. I think that's it, man. I got nothing. I got no juice anymore on these fucking podcasts. Should we do a joke? Let's do a joke. Why is my thing? It's zooming in on this like it's eyeballs or some shit like that. Like it thinks that the knobs on my SG are eyeballs, but they're not the knobs on my SG. Okay. Um, let's look in the joke book here. Uh, have you ever gone to the store and then you get the new guy with the with the person behind them helping? <laughs> this is a horrible premise. Oh god, I think I actually completely forgot how to do stand up comedy. This is fucking ridiculous. Have you ever gone to the store and then you get the new guy? What is even the joke there? Okay, let's see. So the new guy, he's that you're there, and then he's got his little thing that says, "Hi, I'm training." And then the person behind him is like, yeah, okay. And then hit enter and then F4 and then press space twice and scan. And if that ends in a four, then what do you do? Exactly. Then you slide that over. And then it's like, and then you have to wait and you're like, fuck. Why is there a proprietary point of sale system at every establishment? I'm down for a fucking one world order. <laughs> just is just a fucking unitary system, man. Just that everybody fucking agrees upon. And then, the but the danger is with that is just like, well, what if I don't agree with you? It's just like, well, then it's time for war. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I don't know. The new guy, get, I, got, I got the new guy. I went there and there's the new guy and he's standing there. And then there's the fucking manager behind there. And it's like, clearly this dude's like been working here for like 20 minutes. So it's like, there's not, there's literally nothing that separates me from you in, in, uh, <laughs> In context of this store, other than the fact that you are wearing the vest. <laughs> other than that, we both know exactly the same amount about working at this store. <laughs> like, that's how fresh this guy was. And then, uh, and then whatever, he's standing behind the lady, and then the lady's like, okay, and then, and then she's scanning my stuff or whatever, and then something beeps, and she's like, okay, so we have to hit. It wasn't really that, like, it wasn't really that big of a story it's just like regular like there was just one thing then she came in and had to push the button one time or whatever but i just think i want it to be like a big i want to like obviously exaggeration inside ball you got to turn regular experiences into stuff that actually didn't happen right so how do you inflate that right so there's that guy maybe he's like you take that guy turn him into a different character give him a thing the lady give her a thing and then give the whole fucking me cat getting cashed out a bigger issue, you know, that requires a more intricate solution from the lady who might even call over another manager. And now I got fucking new kid just in hot water or whatever. And then all of a sudden it comes back around to fucking, oh, what's the end of the day? Maybe new kid saves the day or some shit like that. How do you get out of it? Right. That's always the hardest thing is how do you get out of those jokes without looking like an asshole as you just look like at the beginning. And then you go, hey, fucking uh, someone, I was the new guy or whatever the fuck. And then you, that's how I fucking got a job there or whatever. Anyways, 15 minutes. Okay, good. Cranking this bitch out. I got no more stuff other than to say thank you to the people who pay for the show, motherfucking uh, Patreons. Anthony, Blair, Joel, Mike D, Patrick, Nick and Mac, Bubba, Marnus, Taryn, Bryce, 
Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, and say in the motherfucking Hall of Fame, Colette and Andre say they name. And hi, Mink. Hi, Mink. Hi, Mink. And Mac and motherfucking PG and Calm. We got uh, Elevate 2, the real remix. That's going to be like a fucking old school sort of like fucking 90s, 90s fucking remix. Elevate 2 with uh, that me and PG and Calm are going to do. I fucking swear to God, man. I've been listening to Elevate on Spotify. We're going to do Elevate 2 remix. Not even a remix. It's just Elevate 2. And it's like more. And now it's just like a 90s fucking just straight bars. Like lyrical as fuck bars. <laughs> okay, calm. So hit me up. And thank you to our sponsor, KingTutsCannabis.com. Still chipping away. I started working on the Rockstar. Now the Diesel. I think it's Sativa. You know, I uh, got those red hairs. You got your red hairs, bro. You kill a camera. I got red hairs on my weed, bro. Oh. Yo, Granny gave me this blood and it had all these red hairs all over it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the seagull, bro. Um, so, yeah. So, anyways, I fucking uh, been switching it up. You know, I'm an Indica guy. So I'm in Indica guy. I'm an Indica guy. And so I've been smoking that shit. Uh, anyways, King Tut's Cannabis. I don't know where the fuck I'm going with this. KingTut'sCannabis.com. Use the promo code Drew for 10% off your order. If it's your first motherfucking time in King Tut's, they'll give you an extra 15% off just because it's your first time because we still drug dealers, all right? You, everybody needs a number and a tester. So go to KingTutsCannabis.com, use the promo code DREW for 10% off your order. That's D-R-E-W for 10% off your order. And uh, yeah, KingTutsCannabis.com. Smoke like an Egyptian. Okay, so thank you. That's it. Um, the music is playing. And yes, okay, we'll do the Monday show on Monday. And uh, yeah. Well, I take three poops, then I get high. How do you start your day? Oh me, oh my. Well, I take three poops, and then I get high.